Welcome back to the Be Dynamic Podcast. I'm your host, Darnisha, and today we have a special guest. I have my little sister here with me. She's home from college for Thanksgiving break, and if I did not get her in a podcast episode, I was not going to hear the last of it. You're right. So she is here with me, and we're going to talk about college life and the changes that you go through in college. Um, being that my journey with starting a clothing brand started in college, and she's currently going through college, I just felt like, you know, well, we felt like this would be the perfect topic to talk about on this podcast episode today. So before we get started, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. Hit the notification bell if you are on YouTube and um, if you're listening on the, any of the podcast platforms, make sure that you subscribe there, download our episodes, and let's get right into it. You should, um, you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself, tell them what school you go to, where you're in. Yeah, give them the basics. All right, so hey y'all, I'm Sierra. The little sister. Um, I'm currently at Grambling State University as a junior, as a nursing major. Right now, I'm in the transitioning of transferring schools, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it's crazy. <laughs> unfortunately, it's crazy. It's not like unfortunately in a bad way. It's just, you know, being a newcomer, you know, second generation, I really didn't think I was transferring schools. Like, I was ride or die for Grambling. Like, HBCU, yeah. Um. Well, I mean, me personally, I told her I'm glad that she is choosing to switch schools because right. I feel like I went through my whole college experience straight through, didn't change a major, didn't change nothing. And I did that because I thought that was the thing to do. I'm like, okay, I don't need to change my major. I'm going to be here longer. I need to get out of here in four years. But honestly, when you're in college, you don't know what you want to do. Yeah, life changes. Yeah, everything changes. Your desires change. So her changing schools, I'm proud that she's actually making that move and not staying somewhere where clearly, hey, it was good at one time, but it's not good right now for right. me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so what challenges would you say you faced, uh, well, you've been in school for two years now? Three years. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you only got one more? Hopefully. Oh. <laughs> she got about one and a half. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, so what challenges do you think you faced while you've been in school these three years? Like, what's your top two? Um, being in college... I, was, I did face many challenges, mostly probably like mental health challenges, mm -hmm. social life challenges for, for sure, though. Just I feel like that school as a general is made for, I'm not saying everybody, but there I didn't fit in. I felt like I didn't never fit in, whatever mm -hmm. I did. I feel, I don't know, the people down there are just different. Like, no, nope, nothing's wrong with it. It's just <laughs> me personally. Coming from Memphis, going to a new state like Louisiana, it's different. And I feel like I really didn't fit in at all. So what did you do to overcome the, like, not fitting in? Because you've been there for three years, so yeah. what did you do to help you figure, out, figure things out while you were there? Honestly, I stayed in my room. <laughs> that didn't help. <laughs> um, let me see. <laughs> when, uh, honestly, just, I don't know, trying to be more outgoing trying to fit into other places see how other people are the f it's just that's just a lot to explain y'all so did lot. you feel like you weren't being yourself when you were trying to fit in yeah okay i feel like being i always been myself so me trying to be new and change just didn't feel right to me mm -hmm. and i felt like that wasn't being my true self of me changing to be someone else's if you know what i mean yeah to fit in with them i All understand right. And you also mentioned mental health. So what yeah. mental health things do you think you went through while you were in college? Definitely freshman year with depression. Like, I what? guess the new feeling is just being away from home and not having family mm -hmm. for real. And just, I don't know, not having the freedom as I have, like, now. Like, I have a car, you know, I can go places a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But still just, like, school as a whole. Like, for me to be in school for so long, you know, already 
it was a COVID year when I graduated high school, so oh, yeah. that was already kind of tough, you know, I'm like, I'm not really feeling school no more, mm-hmm. and I did feel like, you know, I'm going to school just, you know, please my parents and family, but, you know, still, oh. I wanted to be ha- have a career, but at the same How time, being in school for actually four, six years, it's just like, it takes a toll on a person, and I feel like taking that break year semester just bringing me down. You know, mm, listen, let's talk about it. Let's We're gonna talk, talk about, about it. Mom, I'm sorry. Dad, I'm sorry. Sorry. So I know they're gonna watch this video, but it ain't their fault. It's like not. I say that all the time. Like I do not blame my parents at all for wanting the best for me, for thinking this was the best for me, like right. college, um, because. When you when you come up with nothing, the world gives you this idea of what is right. They give you this idea of what is the best for you, what is going to give you the best out of life. And honestly, if you don't know anything else other than that, you're going to just go with it. All right. So our parents just went with it, which is cool. I don't blame them. But after being there, you just realize, like, hold on. Because being in college exposes you to a lot it do it It exposes you to so much more than what your parents might have told you about or what they knew about so it's like I'm going to this place that you're telling me is the best thing for me but when I get there they show me so many other best things for me and now I'm just confused on what's the best thing for me but let me stop you there Mm -hmm. I feel like as your little sister I'm Mm -hmm. following in your footsteps Mm -hmm. I feel like if I didn't complete college or go to college they would have felt you know like mm-hmm. your sister did it, why can't you do it? Yeah. And I didn't want to feel that barren. Yeah. So that's why I really just say I'm just gonna stick it out. Like I gotta go for it. That's true, but you know me. I know. I'd be like, girl, you ain't gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna see how that goes for <laughs> real. <laughs> but but um, um I mean, me. college is cool, but like I said, at some point you figure out what's for you and it takes time like you're gonna try a million different things sometimes you'll try a million different things before you figure out like hey this is for me and sometimes you spend four years three years in college before you realize like okay something has to change um but yeah I just want to and I feel like that's why I'm good at transferring like I want to go in another path like maybe that school wasn't for me but maybe this school is and I feel different about school then Mm -hmm. so and Lord forbid, because I know you don't want this to happen, but that might not even be the school for you. Um, but we hope for the best once you actually do transfer to that school. Did we say what school? No, we didn't say what uh, school. Okay, we ain't going to say what <laughs> We'll keep... Y'all, it's, I ain't gonna say too it's much. already it's a working. <laughs> I so. ain't going to say too much. You'll find out later on another episode. Or something. <laughs> so like that. Um... I did have a question in mind. Okay. Just say hypothetically, you know, what if a person going to college, they're the only child, right? Mm-hmm. They might not be close to parents or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm close to my parents, but I ain't that close like to you and me. I'll tell you before I tell them. Mm-hmm. So just say you have a student that's going through something like really bad and like, how I come to you and certain things in school, but they don't have nobody to, you know, help them out or give them that advice. What would you have advice for them? So... Are they already in college? Yeah, they're in college. They're like me. They just don't have like a that bigger sister or bigger brother they can go talk to. Do they have friends? Maybe, but their friends are in college. Um, what advice would you give to them? And they going through something. Honestly, y'all, and this gonna sound so cliche, but therapy. I remember in college. That's where I first got exposed to therapy. I never went, but I got exposed to it. And I knew a lot of people who actually went to the on-campus therapist, and it helped them. Honestly, I feel like if you don't have nobody to talk to, there is somebody that is willing to listen to you and listen to what you have going on. So I wouldn't be afraid to reach out to the on-campus therapist. I just feel like they don't know you, so... They're kind of like a person you can tell all these things to without any biases attached to your story or to who you are. Because sometimes you can talk to your friends or even family members, but there's always this bias that they have against you because they know your story. They know something about you that makes them think that 
a certain advice is the advice you need, but a therapist, they don't know you. And most people don't have like an outside relationship with their therapist. So I think therapy. Okay. Counseling. Okay. Counseling is good. And I know for our community it's different. It's growing now, but I just feel like at the school now, you know, I guess as a student, you know, it's already a small school as it is. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, students just hesitate to go there, you know. Yeah. But people going to talk about you whether you go or whether you don't go. True. They going to talk about you whether you do what they you they think you should do or what you think do what you, or whether you do what you think you should. They going to mm-hmm. talk like That's one thing I learned like let people talk. I went through a lot of stuff in college that people probably talk. Man, people talk. But whether I would have did what they thought I should do or what I think I should do, they going to talk regardless. So you I really just like, can't worry about it. Yeah, social media had like the biggest impact in college right now. In what ways? Just like the talking about people like right now, we're not going to shade it, but it's, <laughs> a, it's a little website, app or whatever for different schools, you know, HBC. I don't know if it goes for the PW. I don't know yet. Wait, wait what's the app? It's called Fizz. So back in the day, back right. in my day, you know, <laughs> we had Yik Yak. It was the same type it's of thing. It's just like a Twitter just for the university. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you might have people, like now they can upload videos and pictures now. You're mm-hmm. still anonymous, but it's just like still, you know, they like to talk a lot of stuff, and they can't, you know, some people might say, oh, it's me, and some people might not. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people just don't want to be posted. You know, you have some random people that never been posted, don't even have social media, and being posted on Fizz, and, you know, they getting talked about and stuff, getting bullied. That can take a toll on a person. Yeah, for real. And, like, it's, you know, you have the whole school on there. Everybody looks on there daily, and you have other people fizzing up on the comment or fizzing up on this. You know, you might feel down as a person. Luckily, I haven't been on there, and hopefully I'm not going to be on there. But, you know. And if she is, I'm going to make me a fizz. <laughs> it's not even that. It's just. I'm going to make me a fizz. I feel like as a community, why are we talking bad about each other? Yeah. Like, we are all college students. We might not have the same, you know, Gym, lifestyle yeah. as you, but, you know, we're still a college student. Honestly, I feel you. The thing is, I feel like universities, they know this stuff go on. Indeed. And why aren't you doing something to stop it? There's easily a way that you can get lawyers involved to stop the use of an app at a certain location, if you know what I mean. So, I don't know. I just feel like we can't expect everybody to understand, like, hey, this is really bothering a person. Because, first of all, people in college... They're learning and growing through things themselves. Like, they're making mistakes themselves. But And it takes time to understand how one mistake can hurt somebody badly. Um, it's not an excuse, but it's just the truth. Like, it's kids in college, so of course they're going to do childish things. But they also know the outcome of yeah, those things that do, could happen. But they're still, they're still kids at the end of the day. We can't expect... Like, I can't expect. I feel like there is a certain age of maturity that we should grow up to be. Cause yeah. it ain't, maturity is not age, baby. Ooh. But still, if there's a certain age in college where you know. It's still 30, 30 year olds acting like they in high school. Child, it's a 30 year old campus. <laughs> we ain't even get into it. Exactly. <laughs> My point exactly, like, age is not maturity, but it's true that you should be mature enough, but people are just not. True. But that's when it. That's when campus officials should like do something about it if it gets too out of hand have y'all had anybody like hurt themselves yes what it wasn't and it's still going like that app but it wasn't the app i don't think the app was either the app was just now coming out but i don't think it was out to be honest so um, honestly i don't i don't know how that really worked for real mm-hmm. like what their cases was i also think if you can't do anything about the app do something about educating the students, um, educating them on how talking about people can lead to certain outcomes or how joining in on other people talking about people like that can lead to certain outcomes. Or... And I feel like now the school, I'm not going to lie, the school are getting better with that. Like now we have different clubs for like mental health. Like they mm-hmm. are making spaces for people to come together for different things. Yeah. 
So I feel like that's what happened though. Like the mental health got to them or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's what they made them. You gotta do more mental health seminars, like yes. because honestly, like, mental health has became abroad right now, like a big topic on campus. That's yes. good, honestly. Like people need to talk about it because the more you don't talk about it, the more it just builds up inside of you. Like just talk. Because I felt like I'm not gonna lie, sorry, but as a black community household, mm-hmm. our parents don't really get mental health for real. Mm-hmm. They just brush it off like, oh, you'll be all right, or it's nothing. And mm-hmm. I feel like they don't want to really understand, but maybe now they're getting to understand, but I know back in the day they did not understand that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. And we, we don't, not just our parents, like, that's a lot of parents. But you got to understand, one thing that I realized when growing up is the older you get, the more you realize that your parents are people. Mm-hmm. And your parents are people who grew up in a different time than we did. Yeah. Um, it, it's not an excuse, but it's the truth. Um, so they didn't grow up hearing about mental health like we hear about it. We scroll on social media and we see a post about mental health or we see tips and tricks on how to take care of your mental health. But they didn't have that. Mm-hmm. It was go to work, go to school, go to work go to work like it was it was that so i think um yeah our generation or generations Mm -hmm. we definitely have like a it's more it's more open now yeah and now that it's open for us it's up to us to kind of teach teach them Mm -hmm. and you know older people sometimes they don't want to listen that's okay you do what you can and that's it i'm not going to stress about you um I'm not going to stress about you not wanting to listen right. or you not wanting to change. That's that's not my battle to fight. All I can do is tell you, try to help you, and if you don't want to use the tools, oh, well, I did what I can. <laughs> <laughs> really. Ooh, how do we get on this? Mm, that one topic. <laughs> that one question I asked you. Yeah, it was loaded. Um, oh, I got a question. Yeah. So what is going to be different for you at this new school? How are you going to? change the dynamic of your college life (laughs) i'm definitely going to be more like a social butterfly like i want to become more social like is that who you are though let's get into it is that who you are trying to become let's get into it as a child i have always been a social butterfly that's true i don't care who you was i was like you my friend you're my friend let's be friends (laughs) but i guess just getting older and people telling me you know i don't know not people telling me i don't know i think people told me to stop being so outgoing and so Mm -hmm. i i shut it in i start closing in Mm -hmm. as i stopped being shy like i start to being shy actually so i was like you know yeah hey i might still be hey but you know I'm not going to be like, hey, want to be friends? Want to be friends? I don't do that no more. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of hard because it's like, I want friends, you know. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, I don't know. Nowadays, you got to watch people back. But I do yeah. want to become more social, like, you know. Okay. And I think going to a new environment, that's like the best place to do it because mm-hmm. you don't know those people. They don't know They me. don't know you. So you have a clean slate to... Be who you want to be and not actually, because going into college your freshman year, you're going in with all of these things that you've learned in high school or or what high school has made you to be. See, I feel like going there as a freshman, we all had this, like, when I first became part of that school community, a whole bunch of girls was like, let's make a group chat, let's make a group chat. It was about 100 girls in a group chat. I didn't know about half of them, really Mm -hmm. didn't even know about five of them. Then, you know, time go by. Group chat got smaller. Exactly. They started, they started the dropping. Chat. People started leaving. I'm like, I don't even know who these are. So it's just like, honestly, you know, trying to find friends, you know, it could be easy for you if you're down there, you know, from there. Mm-hmm. But coming from states away and not knowing nobody, mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of hard. My advice going into a new school is to just try new things. Like, me, when I tell you, I tried. I tried the ghetto thing. I tried the white folks things. I just tried everything. Like I would like to know what these things were. <laughs> just try new things. <laughs> okay, one thing I can remember is I was with my friends. Was this freshman year? I think so. And they were like, um, "Y'all want to go to this toka party?" I was like. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what that word is. Like, I'm just like, what are you saying? 
<clears throat> and um, a toka party is basically. Have you ever been to a toka party? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> So a toka party is like you dress up in like this sheet. I can't explain it. You put a crown on, okay, type of thing with a sheet. Everybody dressed up like that in mm-hmm. a party. It was fun though, but that's like that's stuck engraved in my memory because mm-hmm. I was just like, what is that? <laughs> but it was just little stuff like that, just trying stuff. And one thing I can say, all the HBCUers, please do not eat me up. All right, but. As a black person, it depends. Now, it depends because I've never been to an HBCU, so I, I got a bias, you know, point of view. But I just feel like going to a PWI, it taught me both sides of the spectrum. It didn't just teach me. Now, it depends on what PWI you go to. If you go to somewhere like Memphis, that's a good one. Or um, Martin, that's a good one to me. Now, if you go to Maryland, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's in Maryland. I don't know what's in Dakota. I, I ain't saying all that. But I definitely feel like a PWI gave me both sides of the spectrum. I was able to see, I was able to see, you know, different perspectives. I was also able to be a little more close-knit with the black culture, the black people that were there. I feel like we were definitely more, like, closer um, because it was a small group of us there. Now at HBCU, it's like all of y'all black. Mm-hmm. And there's no way that all of y'all can come together. Uh, I can't say that. I ain't gonna say there's no way, but. No, they can come together for a party. Sometimes. I just feel like <laughs> there's gonna be friction somewhere. If yeah. You, I mean, it's gonna be friction wherever you go, but I just feel like PWI gave me both sides of the spectrum. It was able to. I was able to mold myself into who I actually wanted to be. I didn't have too much influence on who I am because it was no, it wasn't like the white people trying to make me like the white people or the black people trying to make me like the black. I was just myself. Right. And I, I don't know if everybody had that same experience, but I was just myself. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't have to go to a, I feel like at HBCUs, they try to, it's like super black. It okay. It's it's super black sometimes. Now they're come a little bit more diverse mm-hmm. in my school. Um, I just guess going to HBCU for me was just like I did. I wasn't ready for the culture shock. Like it was a culture shock. No, for like I wasn't ready to be. You know now, like going to a new school. Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like because you know I always been mono- minority. Mm-hmm. Black people, I always went to a school, all blacks, you know. And I feel like I was going, aging to the HBCU because I didn't, I didn't want to go there yet, mm-hmm. go that route. You didn't want to branch out yet. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, I mean, that's kind of why I picked to go to HBCU. But honestly, I love HBCUs. By all means, I love the yeah, culture. don't get me wrong. Like, for some people, it's good. But for some people... It it really depends. Depending on the school, honestly, because I feel like if I went to a school, go to an HBCU, I really wanted to go to, you know. What's that family? Yeah, you know that family, you know, and Cat, you know, all that up there. I ain't gonna I'm lie. pretty sure family was on everybody list. If I was to go back, that's where I would go. I ain't I'm gonna, not gonna lie, to lie. Like, I feel like, I don't know, like, I wanted to go somewhere far from school, but not too far, but I feel mm-hmm. like I'm glad I didn't go. Too far. Because, honestly, being five hours away from home, it's already get up until you tell it you want to come help me no <laughs> so i just feel like going to north carolina fam you would definitely be like yeah yeah a lot fam you lit mm. now, I, if i would if i could go back mm. i would go to fam you i don't think i really knew about fam you back then though know? i only knew about the basic tennessee schools <laughs> yeah i did um, i looking at them shoes <laughs> I wish I would have had the experience, though, at some point so that I could have a better opinion. But I feel like my opinion probably a little biased since I went to a PWI. How was your social life? How was my social life? Yes. Girl. So my social life in college. Before Greek and after Greek. Before Greek. Oh, that's a good question. So before Greek. I really feel like it was the same. I feel like it was the same, but friends just kind of drifted and changed. 
And it wasn't on purpose. It's just, it's hard for me to handle friends. Like, it's hard for me to call people, text people all the time. It's just hard for me to handle friends. And I've been growing. I've been getting better. Y'all can ask my friends. <laughs> but before Greek, I was really just trying stuff. Because I crossed in 16, at the end of 16. So before Greek, I was really just trying everything, doing everything. I don't know. I feel like I was the same person after Greek. I don't really think I changed that much. I got busier. But as far as my social life, like, I would hang out from time to time. Now, I did start to saying no a lot just because... I don't know why people think I got to go out. And I really don't be feeling it. And I'm still the same person today. Like, I, feel I like, still don't be wanting to go out. Because <laughs> nowadays, like, maybe freshman year, I was down to party. Every party, yeah. I'm down. But now, no, I don't feel like going outside. I'm sorry. Yeah, we can I mean, have a party in, in the living room, you know. I'd rather be in the house. I'm not a party animal no more. I just can't do it. <laughs> Yeah, then I had a boyfriend for a while. I feel so. like that had the biggest impact on your social life. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But I ain't mad at it. Work for me? I bet it did. Because <laughs> I feel like, okay, this is the thing. If I didn't have a man, people want you to, you know, go out there and have an H phase. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not that type of girl. I wouldn't have had an H phase either way. I would have just been sitting there like, <laughs> hello, it's me. But... It really wouldn't have changed nothing for me. Okay. I just be chilling. She just be chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I just be chilling. Um, oh, I got a question. So, just like me, she has a dream, right? We all have a dream. We have a dream. <laughs> but you are in school. Mm -hmm. So, right now, where you are right now, what do you really want to do? Perfect. I have the dream. But what do you want to do? Like, what's your, what are you feeling right now? Uh, okay. Okay, yes, my dream has been, like, to be a travel nurse, you know, um, academically-wise, you know. I feel like life happens, so academically, yes, I made dean's list and president's list. I just feel like, you know, when you actually get into that nursing school, clinicals. No, I don't know. You, I just feel like <laughs> hearing about it, yes, it terrifies me. Like, yes, mm -hmm. I got to take tests. I got to make a certain grade to do this. And if I don't, I don't pass. Mm -hmm. I feel like that right there is giving me the heads. Like, I do not want to change my major. I have a straight vision. Like, I'm a self-determination person. When I see something, I'm going to finish it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if I don't finish college, you I can't have that dream. I, I had a backup dream. What's the backup dream? To open up a restaurant. So okay, so that's either, the backup dream. I thought that was a dream dream. It's the backup dream if I don't feel like, like go to the nursing career. Like if I don't, I'm gonna go to culinary school. I'm gonna get what I want mm -hmm. and get it like the best way possible. But yeah. Oh, so I need to but support yeah. differently. I'd be like, girl, set them plates. Yeah, the food's so good. <laughs> yes, doing hair is just a side so hustle. <laughs> set them plates, please. But nah, yeah. for real. Once you get to this new school. I have heard. Please, sell them plates. Because <laughs> the people going to buy it. Period. Once and then they... I have a real stove, yeah, I don't have to hear about nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, so that's like, so cooking is like the side thing. And hair is like the side thing, but nursing is the main thing that you want to do? I mean, yes, but going on life, if I did become a nurse, you know, and get there, I'm still going to take a pause. I still want to have a family, and I'm still going to open up my restaurant. That's oh, okay. So you got <laughs> double dreams. Yeah. Double homicide. Okay. Period. Period. It can be done. It can be done. Um, I was just going to say, you, uh, I was going to say, nursing, since you're going to school for that, that's like a, a given, right? You're going to do the work. You're going to be successful there. But use the culinary and the hairstyling to just, Find the dream mm -hmm. and set you up for greatness. Like, but you really gotta put in the work there, but also not lose focus on nursing mm -hmm. since that is the actual dream. I just feel like if I have that good 
support sister, I'll be okay. Which mm-hmm. I do, I feel like, with you and my parents and my grandparents mm-hmm. and my friends, I really do feel like I have the good support system. Maybe not at that school, but I feel like going to my new school, being close to home, mm-hmm. you know, being in a new environment, I feel like, yeah. Because I feel like at my new school, I would actually learn something. You don't learn, baby. Oh, um, but, but Grandpa, yeah, I learned something, but you know. And it is what it is. The truth is the truth. <laughs> okay? Every time I call her, she ain't in class. No. And class is canceled. I'll be online. And class is online. <laughs> Every time I FaceTime her, she in the bed. I'm it trying is. to figure it out. What? But I just feel what like, I feel like that, at that school being me lazy. Like, it makes me just, not getting lazy, but it just makes me feel like, you know, I don't have that purpose, you know, like actually no going drive. to yeah. yeah. It's just, I feel like, yeah, going into a new environment would be the best for me right now. Yeah. It's going to work out. Um, so before we end off this episode, the theme lately has been grow through what you go through. Let, let's show off the hoodies real quick. You know. If you if you listening on the podcast um, apps, I'm sorry, you don't have to go to YouTube for this. Okay. Or TikTok. If you're watching this, it's Cyber Monday, and if you made it to this point, use code podcast for forty percent off. Ooh. Ooh. I don't think you see it. Ooh. Oh, back up, back up. I see that. Yeah, you know. I hope so. Oh, now I insert some pictures or something. Or something. <laughs> but yeah, if you're watching this, use code podcast for 40% off. Yeah. I got you. Because clearly, you. if you're watching this to this point, you in it. So, what is something, the biggest thing that you think you've had to grow through in the last year? Give me a second, because you asked me this question on the phone that I never answered it. <laughs> Uh, you did never answer. That's exactly. crazy. Because <laughs> you know. told me not to think so much about it. But after I said that, everybody else I asked, mm-hmm. they went deeper than I thought. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Well, we doing this. Let's talk about it. So something I had to grow through was maybe it's just like, it's okay to, you know, walk in your own path, being you, you know, making your own decisions as a young adult. Because I feel like I'm still looked out as a baby. And I want to make my own decisions. And I want to go through life, you know, what's wrong, what's right. You know, this may not work, this may work. Which I have. And mm-hmm. I've learned my lesson. Mm-hmm. And I'm ready to take this card back. But, you know, <laughs> um, I just okay. had to go through life. And I feel like that's something I just, like, have to go through. I don't know, like, just being... Figuring out and making your own decisions. Yes. Creating your own path. Yes. Okay. And not letting people dictate me. Dictate what you do? Yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen. I'm an advocate for make your own decisions. Like, yes, we love advice. But at the end of the day, this is your life. And I say this all the time. This is your life. Nobody else can live this life. Nobody else can be inside your head 24-7 but you. No matter what I say, what they say, what he say, she say. You got to make your own decisions, and you got to be okay with it. Because you're the one who's going to have to live with them decisions. Exactly. So, yeah, that's good. I love it. I like it. Uh, <laughs> that's a thumbnail. <laughs> All right. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the Be Dynamic Podcast. I definitely appreciate you coming through. I hope that y'all had a happy, happy Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope that you spend time with family. If not, I'm sending you love. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, comment down below. Join in with us on the conversation. Let me know anything that you'd like to talk about here on the podcast. Visit our website, www.dynamicxfashion.com. And also follow us on our socials, Dynamic X Fashion as well. We are growing. Things are about to change. We stay progressive. Yeah. But I do want to say something. What? I'm thankful for being dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. Continue to change, progress, grow. Be dynamic. Bye. Oh, you learn to make it on your own. And if you let yourself, just know you'll never be alone. I hope that you get everything you